Jackson Reed basketball is a DCIAA team in DC Public Schools located in Tinleytown, Washington, DC. Um, I think we're the best public school in the in the area. For us, we try to defend, we try to play tough. We want guys that, that love the game of basketball and wants to play at the next level. Formerly known as Woodrow Wilson, Jackson Reed High School is home of one of the most prominent basketball programs in the DC Interscholastic Athletic Association. The Wilson basketball program was turned into a powerhouse during a seven-year stretch under Coach Angelo Hernandez. After Hernandez stepped down in 2021, his position was filled by assistant coach David T. Johnson. It didn't take long for T to earn respect from the DC basketball community. By the end of his first year as head coach, T willed the Tigers to a DCIAA championship and a DCSAA finals appearance. Although T has impressed many with his remarkable coaching, things didn't go as planned in 2023 when Jackson Reed's DCIAA playoff run was abruptly halted after a jaw-dropping upset against Bard High School. Despite the loss, Jackson Reed still qualified for states, only to lose to Sidwell friends again in the state championship. After reflecting upon his loss, T went back to the drawing board. Jackson Reed may have incurred some tough losses, but accepting defeat was not an option. Their only option was to run it back. The ultimate goal for this season is to win the DCIAA championship and make a deep run into the state playoffs. This season we have Lucas Sakazi, Justin Gilmore, Joe McCray, Jaden Fork, Kai Settles, and Micah Charles returning. Uh, we also added JJ, Massacoy, and Scotty Hubbard. One of Jackson Reed's biggest losses was losing four-star small forward Rob Dockery. Rob Dockery is a 6'6 point forward, class of 2024, but he upclassed to the class of 2023. My role was to keep everybody together, just be more of a leader, get guys involved, and get wins. My strengths on the basketball courts are getting downhill, making good reads, and passing. Rob Dockery was a force to be reckoned with. He was ranked 19th in the nation among small forwards and second best in D.C. If you came and watched him play, it was, it was evident that he loved basketball, he cared about it, he had a passion for it, but he was willing to do whatever the team needed him to do to win. He could have 20 rebounds, zero points, he didn't care. 20 assists, zero rebounds, five points, he didn't care. Whatever it took to win, that's what he was going to do. Rob and T were very close. When criticized for his shooting abilities, T encouraged Rob to tune out the critics and play off his strengths. I would always tell them, be, be as dominant as possible. If you don't have to shoot jumpers, don't shoot jumpers. Get to the rim, they can't stop you. It wasn't long before Rob was averaging 14, 6, and 3, earning all met honors from the Washington Post. Offers were coming in from everywhere. Schools like Maryland, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, and Texas A&M. With so many eyes on Rob, a lot was expected of him. This was especially the case come playoff time his senior year. The purpose of Fall League is to build team chemistry, allow the guys to gel with each other on the court and play, but it's also an opportunity for the coaches to kind of build the culture for the next year. Hey, energy and effort, man. That's what we control. Energy and effort from the, from the top. Play hard as we can. I guess that's where we can kind of show what we want and what we don't want as a staff. The biggest thing in Fall League is that we can play non-league opponents without them having to worry about losing to a public school. So we get good exposure. And, and good, meaningful bump in those in those fall league games that we that we wouldn't traditionally get during the season because most of the private schools won't play us in a regular season. It's a lot to lose, but nothing to gain. You'll get frowned upon if you lose to a public school and you're a private school. So, and that's a way to keep public school kids going to private school. I think that's the separation right there. Uh, at the CBG Live in Richmond, we had Highland, a, a high-level opponent, and again, it's a, it's an early test for preseason, but just being able to see 
like how well the guys were able to play together, how they were going to fight through adversity. Uh, they had the kid, Nate Mint, who's pretty good, uh, has an offer from Duke. So uh, being able to play against guys like that and seeing where we stand up against teams like that. We aren't able to practice much, so it's just us really going into those games and just me as a coach just trying to get these guys better on the fly. It's been, it's been my bad coach, my bad coach. Mm -hmm. I don't got time for my bad. Maybe today. Moving forward, I don't got time for that. Season time, we don't got time for my bad. Get the job done. It's 30-30, that's too many points. You're not playing enough defense. At the same time, too, they are working us all over the floor. Rebounds, transition, 50-50s. Defense, they all working us. It's tough for us to get to the basket, but it's easy for them to get to the basket. The failure guy, we should have help behind. Come on, let's go. Got to play tough. Together on three, one, two, three. Yeah. Hey, keep applying pressure on the rim on this side. Defensively, keep being tough. Keep Bro, getting no not, easy drives. That's all the game is about. Bro, we got three stops. Look at the score now. Just because we're, we've been dominant, I think it's tough to kind of get these guys up to play public schools. Uh, Lago, Lago is a pretty good school in their division, in their league. Uh, we know they had Cam Ward, a pretty good player. But it's still, it's still tough to kind of motivate these guys to play another public school just because traditionally we we route, we route majority of the public schools that we play. Hey, JJ, what's your issue today? Hey, we, we can't win with attitudes like that, man. Can't win. Can't win with attitudes like that. That's what it is. They not, they not uncomfortable on the offensive side. They feel like they can play with us because we allow them that. And guys are acting like pouting this shit, man. That's why you get the ball on offense, be tougher. You, you fall on the ground, get up, talk to the rest. Get your ass back. Play harder. Play harder. Whenever I'm correcting one player, I try to use that player as an example for everyone, just because we may see a player making a mistake, but somebody will come and make that same mistake. So I try to help the entire team grow from one mistake. So that way we aren't going and recorrecting the mistake that someone has already made. Uh, JJ, he didn't give us as much as he could, but it, it was more mental than anything. I think JJ is a specimen with his physicality and, and athleticism is unmatched when he steps on the court. Like he always has the advantage there. And he and he tends to like not be what he can be. Like he wants to be a jump shooter, he wants to live on the perimeter. Well there's nothing wrong with that, but I think you gotta be you gotta have some balance. But be be more aggressive at what you're better at versus what you're not as good at yet. So for him I think with his with his physicality and athleticism. He could be, he could put pressure on, on the rim against any team, and nobody can stop him. So, hey, why not do what you, what people can't stop you at? They can't handle the ball. They don't want to handle the ball, right? So we run and jump. Obviously, guy rotate. We leave the furthest pass away open. They can't make that pass out of a trap. If they do, the guys that's in the trap getting subbed out. Hey, keep the intensity up. Let's go. We went up to Delaware for a May Hoops event, fall league event, and uh. We handle business. Hey, that's a good. That's a good first half. Held them to 21. We had 45. I think 21 is too many though. Sure how they just gave us? How they just gave us the ball? 21. That's because we started off. Hey, cool. They was comfortable. They making shots. We make them uncomfortable. How many shots did they hit now? Come on. They just give us the ball, right? A team full of white jerseys. Come on, keep playing hard. Hey, the defense intensity not gonna stop. It's just playing hard, man. At the college level, that's that's the requirement. So I'm just trying to make sure that these guys understand that before they get to that point. Hey, when they lead the game, Jackson Reed, really tough, they play hard, and college coaches want guys that play hard. The DCIAA semifinals was interesting. Jackson Reed had blown out Bart earlier in the season by 30, but for some odd reason, 
Bard couldn't miss that night. Um, I think I think we let our community down. I think we let our fans down. I think we let a lot of people down. Everybody thought like, oh yeah, Wilson ain't that good. They done. They ain't gonna make it far. Regardless of the crushing defeat, Jackson Reed still qualified for the DCS Double A playoffs. I think, I think that loss humbled the team. Honestly, I think that loss helped us make the state. I think if we would have won DCI Double I don't, I, don't, I don't know what our chances would have been to make it to the state championship. Losing to Bard fueled them to dominate in the quarterfinals. After that, it was the semifinals against St. John's. We already know what time it is when we play against teams like that. WCAC versus Public, you always trying to get that type of win. We lost DCIAA, and we beat the WCAC champs. People are going to respect us. Jackson Reed was holding it down for most of the game, but St. John's fought back. Malik Mack cut Jackson Reed's lead to two with 7.3 seconds left on the clock. Unfortunately for St. John's, Justin Gilmore got fouled with 2.1 seconds left on the clock. He missed the first free throw, but then hit the second. Next was the rematch everyone wanted to see. Sidwell Friends versus Jackson Reed. Hey, I think that matchup is what the city always wants to see. Hey, I, I go on record and say that the game versus us and Sidwell is more packed than GW games on a regular basis. Sidwell was favored to win again, and this was Jackson Reed's opportunity to get revenge. The game was neck for neck for the first half, but then at some point in the third quarter, Sidwell began to separate themselves. Scott and Pope was make them drive because they got a bunch of shooters, and we obviously then do what the scouting for was. So they hit threes. We had come down to score. They hit another three. We had come down to score. Hit another three. And it was like really deflating. And like it just made us get flat, lose a lot of energy, even though it was a championship game. Cam Gills was hitting some big shots. Rob was playing his heart out, but his individual performance wasn't enough. Sidwell was just too much. The game ended 62 47. I wouldn't say the stage was too big. I just think we didn't show up that day. We had that great team, and we didn't get really nothing out of it. We didn't get a championship, so it left the emptiness inside of all of us. It was disappointing, but it was just like, damn, not again. Jackson Reed went undefeated throughout the Fall League, but there was much more to prove. The team was invited to a fall tournament called Border League East. I felt like it was important for us to play in Border League East because of the competition that was there. Again, I try to play the best all the time. To be the best, you gotta beat the best. Jackson Reed was scheduled to play DeMatha for the first round. We know that DeMatha is a powerhouse. Uh, anytime you walk in the gym and play DeMatha, like beating them brings a lot of good to your program. So we wanted to capitalize on that. The most dominant player is Malcolm Thomas. He's a Villanova commit, super athletic, high motor. I think for us, we just had to make it tough as possible for Malcolm, like keeping him off the glass. When he's able to get offensive rebounds and get out in transition, uh, that's when he's at his best. Hey, we, this for a championship this weekend. Let's, let's go out here, warm up like it, play like it. All right, come on, toughness. Defense, play together. Tigers on three, family on six, one, two, three. Tigers. Four, five, six. Family. I remember them making seven threes in the first quarter. They had, they had seven threes in the first quarter. They had seven threes in the first quarter, but that's warm ups. That's warm ups. The math that they warmed up, they warmed up hard, they warmed up ready to play. Hey, they was down there making shots. We was down there bull. Then we cut the lead, not know where we are. Hey, Jaden, you the biggest motherfucker on the floor and you right there watching. You the biggest one on the floor and just watching. Rebound the ball. Same. They had a chip on their shoulder because we had just beat them in the summer league. They were trying to get their win back. So uh, they came ready to play. We started off slow. I think in the third quarter, the guys locked in.
Come on, man. Come on. Hey, right here. Hey, more life. More life. More life. More life. More life. Zero, zero. Open it up, man. Zero, zero. Hey, we need stops to win the game. We don't need buckets. We need stops to win the game. We don't need buckets to win this game. We need stops. After battling the f our first league, the game was in OT uh, off Micah's layup. Uh, they came right back down the next play and hit a three. Like ah damn, we we we've been fighting. We can't we can't we couldn't catch a break. And then Scotty was able to get a steal, which turned into a foul, and he went to the free throw line and iced the game. Preseason pre stuff, them the games we won. Them the games we won. No better way to play a game, learn, right? Become better. Like we're gonna be better because of that game, because it was tough. Mm -hmm. But we can't make the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. But hey, good win. Let's let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. We're here for one reason, man. That's 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 to win a championship on Sunday. One game at a time. Good work, good work, good work. Good work. I was gonna miss everything, a lot. Coming here with Coach T, I knew I was gonna make it far. I just knew he had my back and he wasn't gonna let me down. So I trusted him, it was always hard on me. It kind of got with me when I was younger though, but you see now it paid off. I really appreciate it. The school I committed to after graduating Jackson High School was Texas A&M. After taking my official visit there, it felt like love. It's crazy because Texas A&M, it's kind of, I ain't gonna say it's like Wilson, but the environment and how the family is, it's just all in. This year's team at Jackson Reed, I think will be a very good team and I think they'll make a long run. JJ from Dematha, he's just very aggressive, get on the rim, rebound. I think that's what Jaden needs to get his motor going. Somebody else do with him down there that's gonna bump with him. Scotty, shooter, transfer we needed. T always keep a shooter with him. And I think just running that place, trusting T, they get far. Uh, so in the semifinals for Border League, we beat Imhotep. Uh, we beat them by 20. We had O'Connell in the championship game of Border League. Going into that game, we knew they had some highly ranked guys. Uh, Quincy Wiley, top 20 ESPN in the 2026 class. Bryson Tucker, top 40 in the ESPN 2024 class. Coming into that game, I feel like we matched up pretty well. And we just we just knew that it would be a dog fight. We not being tough enough. So I was, I was, they're pressuring. I told you, hey, what they gonna do? They gonna pressure. Y'all just said it did. We see pressure and we timid. As Quincy Wiley had a, had a tremendous game. Scored about 27 on us. We try to make it tough for guys, so for him to get 27, that was that was that was pretty impressive. O'Connell was able to capitalize when they got second chance rebound and hit some big shots down the stretch. Honestly, I don't think we made many shots that game. Like Scotty was the only one really hitting shots for us. Micah Charles as well, but we didn't we didn't have enough guys contribute on the offensive side. I think I think JJ let O'Connell off the hook. For us, we need him to be as aggressive as possible at all times. It was a point in the game where O'Connor went on a run and it kind of felt like due to the run, the guys kind of laid down. How bad do y'all want it? Fight to a zero on the clock. NHS, making them, hey, they, they got to finish the game at the free throw line. We tough or they call foul. Pretty point, point blank for it. We tough or they call foul. They ain't turn it over, come on. And it was, it was that was the total opposite of what we saw in the DeMatha game. I think in DeMatha we fought, M Hotel we fought, and then when we saw adversity in the O'Connell game, we kind of laid down. So O'Connell will be a, will be a nationally ranked team for sure. So being able to be in the game and be able to compete at that level, it shows us how good we could really be. For me, losing it could be the championship, it could be a regular season game. Losing losing feels the same way. I hate to lose more than I love to win. That's just that's just how I was built. That's how I'm wired. So so anytime I lose. It's, it's, it's never a good thing. It's never something that I walk away from the gym happy about. 
I'm always trying to figure out what I can do to get better. How we expect you to score points if you, if you can't show me that you can score right now? I only go off what I see. So the guys that are scoring in practice and giving us something in practice, that's who I got to rely on in the game. If you can't, if if we get a, if we go down, we start losing and y'all just quit. That's, I'm going to expect that to happen in the game. So don't expect to play. Uh, for the forwards and, and for the forwards, dominate the paint today. They got they got long wings. That's pretty athletic. They not they not really filled out yet, but I think we can dominate the paint. We should we should win the rebound war. For us, right? Trust, share, celebrate. Trust each other. Share the ball. Celebrate each other on on, on makes and mistakes. Right? We over me, man. Pick each other up. That's just that's that's what it is. They want to know. Come on, let's go. Let's go out, Our first game of the year is in the James Hampton Showcase up at Coolidge High School versus West Philly. Defense wasn't as good in the first half. Uh, those guys were making a lot of shots too. I think we were doing a good job at running them off the line. Uh, they were just they were just hitting contested shots. They made 12 threes in the first half. They got 34. Remember I told y'all it's one way to play. We not playing that. We not doing it. We not playing hard as we can. If so, you wouldn't negate that shit up before the half, Jaden. You wouldn't negate that. You wouldn't negate that up before the half. That that matters right there. Hey, one second left. Let me just tap it my way. Let me finish the half strong. Instead of us going up four, we go we go up one. Make them uncomfortable. Get up. That's the whole purpose of it. Hey, there's no energy on the bench either. Come on, let's pick some energy up. Let's pick some energy up, man. There's no energy. No energy. Stop the man. Stop the energy. Hey, together on three. One, two, three. Together. I think JJ kind of ignited us. He, he was being the guy that I always asked him to be. Just just being physical, being being aggressive, and that, and I think in that game he kind of showed growth. JJ was a kid that transferred over from Dematha, um, and I think. Up until this point, he's, he's definitely making his presence felt and showing that he has some value, next level player, and he's just trying to prove that he can play the game of basketball. The coaches from West Philly, they weren't really fans of the calls that the ref were making. And eventually they just they just bowed out, they quit, they walked off the floor. No disrespect to you or your team, y'all played good, all right? We all right, we just can't. It's just so nice. To lead the floor with your team, I think regardless of the circumstance, you gotta finish what you start. Three. All we, all we can do is show up and play as hard as we can. I don't think we did that today. Regardless of what's going on, we control how hard we play. We control how tough we play. We control how much we play together. Control everything we control, right? Game was ugly the whole entire way. We could have we could have we could have quit. We could have folded. We could have done other stuff, but we did it. We just wanted to be as dominant as possible in our first showing to kind of put the city on notice and wake everybody up and show them that Jackson Reed was coming. Jackson Reed took care of business at the James Hampton Showcase and was looking forward to playing Archbishop Bryan at the DC Gonzaga Classic.